Okay, day. Thank you, thank you, Miss. Thank you, Missy. I appreciate you. I really do. Uh, oh God, did I just kick him fully from the server? <laughs> We're gonna have to invite him back in. All right, anyway. <clears throat> thank you all for coming to this wonderful May Town Hall. I appreciate you all being here. We're gonna get this show on the road. Hannibal Forge. Why is Hannibal Forge a legionnaire, huh? Give this guy the right role. Give this guy the right wall. Hold on. Hold on. He's an allied leader. There you go. There you go. All right. All righty. People, 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 thank you for coming. As you may have seen in the announcement that was sent out in the Flash News channel, uh, we're going to start this off with a bit of a candid talk about recent events, uh, about the number of uh, leaders who have departed our lands. Um, we're going to give you a little bit of info on the new Armor Academy 895 Regiment. Uh, Mike's going to give you a little bit of a scoop on that. Then we're going to go into promotions. We're going to hit you with some big promotions. Very big promotions. And then we're going to go into the Q&A as always. It's going to be not too long. You know, not too long. It's going to be just right. It's going to be perfect. Um, all right. As I've said, the first thing we're going to be talking about um, is the recent situation that has gone on. Um, let's see. We have had a number of leaders depart uh, fairly recently for a number of different reasons. Uh, not all of them were connected, just to be very clear. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to give you the scoop. So, first things first, long-time amateur, Waspy VS, was demoted and then left as a result of a number of negative reports that had come in over the years. Um, and, yeah. So, that happened kind of before everything else happened. Um, in recent weeks, we've had the departure of our outfit leader, Uber, um, who is, just, just simply because it was becoming too much of a job, uh, had too little enjoyment for him for too long, um, and just wasn't working out, just wasn't working out for him anymore. Um, we also had the departure of Tayashi, um, who found uh, in his during his other way that it just didn't make much sense for him to to come back in the capacity he had before, um, and so the ghosts, his his babies, have been passed on to uh, to Angel, um, and will will absolutely miss Tayashi as well. And also another Sarah, but Zavrex has also uh, departed, um, basically for the same reasons as the others. That this was just the right time, and that uh, sticking around anymore didn't seem to make too much sense. So. We have had the departure of these uh, major, major titans of our community, and we're very sad to see them go. Um, yeah, they do be, Tayashi, they do be. Definitely understandable. Um, but of course, the elephant in the room, um, and the thing to address most directly, uh, and the thing that I think most people are confused about, is that over 9,000 was asked to leave um, a couple weeks ago, and a number of people who were against that choice um, and who supported over nine decided to depart with him. Um, and they formed up a new outfit called VSTD, which is doing quite well. Um, now, here's the situation around that. And the information about this has been a bit sparse. Um, if you did see on the day of, um, I put out a pretty lengthy bit inside of the Flash News channel um, saying basically the general explanation about why... Um, this, this situation happened, where this split occurred. Um, but it, it didn't give you a whole lot of detail on how that choice was made or why that choice was made. Um, and I think a lot of people were rightfully confused, uh, both in our command structure and in um, the general outfit. Because uh, at the end of the day, this was a decision that was made by Uber and Uber alone. Um, he did not uh, get elite command vote on it first. Um, when he messaged me about it, I was uh, urging to potentially not go forward with it in the way that he, at least in the way that he had planned. And um, and he, he went forward with it anyway, anyway, because he was very confident in his decision. And uh, it's a decision that I am personally still undecided on. Um, and I think I probably will be pretty much forever because we'll never have the answers of whether it was the best decision or not the best decision. But I do seek to give some clarity on why over 9,000 was asked to leave um, when he was asked to leave. Um, so, 
basically the gist was this. Over 9,000, if you've played with the guy before, um, super smart guy. Super smart guy, and, and honestly a pretty friendly guy too, but also a very strongly opinionated guy. Um, and for quite a long time in SKL leadership, um, for these last, I don't know, six, seven months, we've had the issue of people who are very strongly opinionated sometimes expressing those opinions in a way that made other people feel crappy, uh, even if it was not intentionally at all. I mean, I, I obviously overnight never intended to make other people feel like shit, and um, neither did anybody else who sort of followed in, in similar fashion. But it was a problem that was uh, constantly happening more and more, and more and more people were beginning to sort of act in this way where they would express their opinions in this sort of hyper-aggressive manner. And we also had a number of people in the Elite Command and High Command who had a hard time sticking up for themselves, had a hard time, you know, asserting their opinions, had a hard time holding their ground, um, and had a hard time, you know, dealing with it when people were being kind of just a little bit rude, were being a little, little too harsh, were coming at them a little too strongly. And, you know, I just had a big meeting with High Command and Elite Command just before this town hall in which we talked about this and talked about how we're going to deal with the situations in the future. Uh, how we're going to, you know, do it on both ends, how people need to work on making sure that they're not making other people feel bad. And also people um, who are a bit shy and a bit timid uh, can work on both standing up for themselves and, and, and managing these situations to as much as they can. And then if the situation does get out of the control, then, um, you know, everybody will have their back and we'll, we'll deal with those situations. But uh, I, this is basically where it came from. And so Uber, you put yourself in his shoes. Um, He's, he's sitting there, and he's getting DMs uh, continuously from over the, the many months. Um, he's getting DMs about how over nine or uh, people who are, are very you know, closely connected to over nine um, are making them feel bad or making them feel like they can't talk anymore or making them not really want to play Planetside anymore or making them not really want to be in the community anymore. And Uber sees that even after the many meetings that we had with Over9 and other people, uh, the many discussions we had, the many improvements that we began to make, um, that overall um, we were not having uh, permanent improvement. And the people who are being immature in town hall chat right now, chill the fuck out. Grow up a little bit. Come on, people. Well, what are we doing? Are we five years old? No, we're not. We're not in preschool anymore, all right? Jesus Christ. Um, over nine is a fine human being, okay? Now, people. Um, Uber, uh, Uber is getting these DMs, all right? He's getting these DMs, and he's seeing that it's causing a problem in the community. And he's seeing that the solutions that we were trying, we're not perma-solving this. And he saw a future where, you know, Overnight was going to be in that for, for a while longer, and these things may continue, may not be solved. And he ultimately decided that it was worth the call to to ask overnight to leave. Um, of course, in doing that, you, you can't be blind to the fact that yes, while there was these negative DMs coming in for Uber, there was also a huge amount of positive feedback for overnight. A huge amount of people who very clearly uh, liked him and liked the stuff that he did very well. And he's a very charismatic guy and a very capable guy. And so. There was many people who left, and I think the fallout was significantly greater than even Uber predicted. I mean, he knew that there would be people who were upset, and he knew some people may leave, um, but he was not he was not anticipating the the mass exodus that we've seen of a, of a great number of our um, of our leadership. Um, and so that's basically where it comes from, right? You put yourself in his shoes. He thought he had to make this tough decision for the future of the outfit, and you know, me, I think. Uh, and I think many people agree that if this was to be done, it should have been done a lot earlier. It shouldn't have been done while the situation was improving, while Ops Knights were doing really well, while stuff was sort of getting better. Um, because that sort of threw an extra added negative wrench into it and, and sort of put people off even more. Um, and at the very least, we don't want to have any bad relations with Overnine, VSTD, who have been doing great stuff. They've led a fantastic bastion the other day that I was in. It was beautiful. Uh, they're winning alerts, they're running great platoons, um, and there's no reason why we don't want overall the Emerald Vanu community to be positive. And so we're working on getting them into the Vanu community Discord. They're going to be, uh, hopefully, I don't know I don't know if it's 100% yet because they're they're not fully you know, set yet on things, but hopefully we'll get them in for our Bastion event that's coming up, um, as you hopefully saw 
in uh, Flash News, the Emerald Bastion Clash happening on June 11th. Um, and overall, there's no reason to be uncivil about stuff. There, there's no reason at all. And there's zero bad blood on our end, and they've done a fantastic job of being extremely respectful back as well. Um, if you've been on Command Chat the last few days, there have been trolls trying to sort of create anger and, and dispute between the outfits, and and uh, both sides have held firmly that there is no reason for that, um, and that there is no hard feelings, even though the split was a little bit rough, it was a little bit too much. So that's the situation on it. Uh, hopefully, over time, we'll be able to get a couple of them back in our Discord, help communicate, help to you know smooth out those relations even more. Um, but, yeah, you know, going forward, overall, it's positive, people. It's positive. And we're going to see this turn out, you know, however it's going to turn out. SKL is obviously not going to die, where you've still got many leaders here. Uh, we've still got a huge amount of uh, a massive community, and we're still doing very, very well. We've still got the platoons running in-game. Um, it has been less of late, as Hannibal has noted, uh, as a result of, you know, many of these people being very active leaders. And so our, you know, 24-7 platoons are now maybe down to a 27 platoons, you know, something like that. But we are still going to be running uh, lots of platoons, lots of events, and everything is still going to go on perfectly fine, pretty much, for the most part. Um, and I think things will go very well for BSTD and other outfits um, as well. So that's the general gist, people. Um, I will take questions about this at the end during that Q&A. If anybody does have any questions, if you've got any private questions, absolutely feel free to DM me. Um, and we can we can go further into that. Um, but also, uh, you know, as a result of these leaders leaving, not to, you know, say that we should like, that we weren't doing this before and that we only will now, but of course, this opens up lots of nice spaces uh, inside of the academies, uh, lots of opportunities for leadership to be a platoon leader, to get your platoon leader pants on and start doing some work and start learning the ropes. Um, so do join up in the academies. The Roland Academy sign up channel up by the top of the Discord. It's got a bunch of different options. Very, very cool. Lots of cool people. Um, who can teach you very important stuff. And if you just are interested in trying out platoon leading, even if you're not you know, totally confident, even if you're not totally sure whether you'll be any good, absolutely give it a shot. Nobody who leads platoons was a natural and was great at it at the beginning. I sucked fucking asshole. I was terrible. And look at me now, motherfucker. Look at me now. Um... Alrighty. Was VSTD a Swick or was it another, albeit less magnanimous, prey split? Uh, not exactly. Um, so the prey split was obviously a very sort of decided thing um, and was about, you know, basically our, the prey that we have currently in SKL is, is both the Infantry Academy and uh, the Hunter Killers. Um, VSTD was more just people who were maybe, maybe a little more sweaty in terms of what they thought about leadership, but, but even then, you know, was people of varying opinions on, on how leadership should work. Ultimately, it's just the people who were upset with the decision that Uber made um, and who decided that they just didn't want to stick around. And, and honestly, I get it, because in a lot of ways, that probably felt like a bit of a punch in the gut, and the lack of consultation probably felt like, you know, elite commands up in their ivory tower, not really understanding the way that the outfit works and understanding what people want. Um, and I think that that's a, that was a, a fair criticism for them to have. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's pretty much the gist. Yeah, you know, Hannibal, it, it is nice to have a little drama every now and then. And Eskel's had very little drama overall. I mean, we had a couple other bad bits, for sure. Um, some, some folks hopping out here and there. But never have we had like a major you know, AOD-level split or something like that. And we don't plan to. I don't think we ever will. I think we're pretty fucking solid. I think we're good to go. Um, Mike, are you back? He let me know that he was. He needed to hop out for a moment, but he's up next with the hmm, the eight nine five Black Sun Riders Regiment. Ooh la la! It's gonna be good. I think he's still out for now. So yeah, if anybody else has got any questions, you feel free to toss them in town hall chat for now. Uh, we'll just wait for Mike to hop on back. So we can um, start talking about the the eight nine five. Hopefully that did clear it up for y'all. Um, it is a confusing situation. It is one that's been going on for a long time. Believe me, if there was an obvious solution, we would have done it. Oh, Tayashi, your bedtime story. I know. 
I have to do the bedtime story. I I keep on forgetting to, and I don't know uh, what to do about it. I'll get you your ASMR eventually, all right? Relax, buddy, relax. Um, he was, and I'm going to, and just, all right, give me time. Uh, will it you? How does one get promoted? You are first going to, it depends what you want to do, um, but you have to join the academies. Uh, roll an academy sign up, you go in there, you join up an officer academy, probably if, you, if you're interested in platoon leading as such, or one of the other academies, and you work your way up through there. Mike is back, so we're going to move on to that. Save your questions for the end, please and thank you. Uh, let me pull Mike up here. Where is he at? Mike, 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 there he is. He's got the 895 tag. Invite to speak. All right. Take it away. Oh, it helped if I unmute. Coming in all right? Oh, wait, I can't see chat. Sweet. So, full disclosure, 895, I kind of formed playing off of 8, you know, it, it's played off of a lot of the uh, armor fits that have previously existed or currently exist in some capacity. It was also formed during the whole over 9 situation, and the two people that I went to are no longer in SKL to form it. So, in a way, it kind of just got a free pass, so I could have made it its own outfit and not made it a... Regiment of Renown. I chose to make it a Regiment of Renown. Um, and that was mainly just because, you know, there's been good faith effort put forward in the academies here, and I'm seeing progress in game and want to keep that going. But the goal of 895 is to just have organized armor play that is casual and contributes to the alert. Um, I don't ever anticipate it going over two squads ever. And by two squads ever, as in, like, having it two squads <clears throat> worth of members. But um, it's taking on the SKL structure of public platoons, but from an armor standpoint. So it's public platoon, but it'll say public armor platoon by 895 rather than, say, SKL. Um, it, it, it's so that it doesn't, it, it's not sweaty like some of the other hardcore armor fits were like, you know, that's all they do and they're great, you know, 1v1 duelers. It kind of incorporates everything. It, it, it's the public platoon, so it's going to be a mixed bag. You're going to have people not listening. It, it's difficult, but we're trying to make it work. Um, Slave Philly has come on and elected to help, who's really, really good in armor. Um, and so has uh, Ross uh, recently wants to help out and see that through, but it's supposed to be a home for people that just do armor like myself and love doing armor. Um, and it, it, where like if in an infantry platoon, it might be out of place to just be in a tank 24 seven, you know, you might get kicked because you can't redeploy or something. Whereas I hopefully the, the 895 platoons, you could be in armor and you're not going to get kicked. It's the opposite. You might get kicked because you're playing as infantry or not gunning or something like that. So it, it, think like opposite. And then also it's not going to be a mindless Zerg going around the map, um, going behind enemy lines and stuff. Now, if it's 1 o'clock on a Monday and there's nothing going on, we might do something crazy like that. But at prime time, we're hopefully going to be in command chat with a squad, possibly two squads, and be working with command chat so that, like, when you're going to they pay command, I'm going here, I can stage and get there and roll up some armor. It kind of is what it is. Um, I hate to say it, TR armor is a fucking problem for VS, and so is NC armor lately. So this is a hope to get VS armor in general organized and going, because there are armor players out there, but it is super hard to filter through and find them because of how big and uh, present SKL is, but now that we have some other fits and other people are running, it, it, it it's allowing for variety. So I, I'm really excited about it. Um, I don't anticipate it ever um, splitting and becoming its own thing, but if it ever got like way too big, I would have to cross that bridge when it gets there. But uh, for now, it's considered a sub-fit under SKL. Um, and I'm hoping it plays into the alliances that comes out in November on the roadmap, because if it does, then it's also an armory extension to the main outfit. 
So we have orbitals. That's the other reason why it's a separate outfit. I want access to Colossus Tank. My goal is to have all our members be able to pull a Colossus Tank when they want. So um, it, it just makes sense to have a separate outfit for that. Um, and it's just another outfit out there putting discounts down. Should we ever get green and get large enough to produce green on a regular basis? We're doing pretty well right now. Um, but uh, if you're interested, I am looking for you armor players that may or may not be present in this call. So I'm uh, just really excited about it. I pretty much outlined everything in the structure that's in the Discord here. Um, I'm going to copy the, where is it? I'm going to copy the channel link, and you can read about it. It's got its own Discord. You can check that out, too, if you so choose. But I outline it pretty well on what its intent is, um, and it's pretty flexible to expand in the future or whatever it wants to become. But for now, it's just a way to identify um, armor players for the VS. So I am looking for you, but that's really all I got. I'm going to go back down, or unless you could kick me back down, Kaz, I'm done. Yeah. Boom. All right. Thank you very much, Mike. Yes, people, if you didn't hear, uh, check out 895 if you are interested in armor play, learning it, playing it, doing it. Um, if you are a platoon leader for our outfit, absolutely be ready to be working with um, that uh, regiment over command chat as well uh, and having them help you out wherever you need armor support. Hopefully we can start making a dent into the armor game, uh, just as we did with the air game, sort of earlier with the air academy. Um, always been tricky with VS and vehicles, uh, but we are, we're, we're beginning to, to, to get it going. It's going to look good. It's going to look good.